You are listening to the Anxiety Podcast, where we support you to overcome anxiety and reduce stress. We will get vulnerable and it will be real. Here's your host, Tim J.P. Collins. Hello and welcome to the Anxiety Podcast. Thank you for joining me today. We're going to be talking about mornings and getting started and uh, a bit of a self-experiment I've been doing lately and wanted to share that with you because it's small and seems insignificant but actually is very significant. It's uh, profound. It's an interesting shift. So I'll get onto that in a moment. Before I do so, if you're new to the podcast, welcome along and go to the website anxietypodcast.com. Get the free stuff. There's a end anxiety guide or toolkit. There's also a five week YouTube course which you can go and consume. If you can't wait five weeks, you just uh, probably watch them all straight if you want. But ideally, five weeks um, and spread it out and kind of soak that stuff up. So a couple of options there for you. Also, as I was speaking about on the accountability episode, on June 30th, which is now a few weeks away, I am starting the first ever More Life Mastermind, which uh, I think we're up about eight or nine people so far. Still got a few spots open for that. Um, the More Life Mastermind is a group which is going to be meeting once a week. We're doing it on a Sunday at 12 Pacific, so people in the UK can participate. I've even got somebody from Australia who's going to be doing a very early start, apparently. But anyway, the Mastermind is going to be about physical health, mental health, anxiety, setting challenges, accountability, and moving beyond things that make us feel uncomfortable and uh, just getting stuck in. So again, if you're interested in that, the website uh anxiety podcast or just go to tim jpcollins.com forward slash mastermind and you can find out all about it uh if you have any questions shoot me a message but uh it's all there for you um i wanted to start off today by reading some of your reviews so if you've never left me a review on uh itunes which is no longer now it's called apple Podcasts or stitcher or anywhere else then you should do because i really appreciate it i get a digest of the ones that come through and uh i love them um, and one of them was quite funny this time, so I wanted to read it out to you. Uh, so yeah, a couple of a couple of highlights from the recent ones I got. Um, an amazing source of real world usable advice and information from someone who has lived through it and is proof that if you do the work, you will win the battle. Uh, thanks for that. That is from uh, Win the Battle, or no, I don't know. I don't know if that's their name. That's just uh, Real World. That's probably not the name either. Anyway. That's uh, one of the reviews that came through. And yeah, I feel like uh, I'm going to do an episode on this, but I feel like I'm still improving, if that makes sense. I feel like I'm, you know, a lot of people look at, if you look at my trajectory from 2011 when I was at my worst to today, um, I still feel like I'm getting better. I still feel like I'm still finding those little additional grains of confidence or still putting things into my life which is making me shift and and just feel that much better and instances historically where I was like oh I used to and going into this I'm probably gonna be anxious and I'm like I'm not anxious anymore I'm not anxious in that specific situation or presentation or task or travel method or whatever it happens to be and so I'm still seeing an evolution which is really cool and and something I want to dig into and keep sharing with you so that it can help you out as well right Um, This one is from Rachel in the UK. Tim, I've been binge listening to your podcast over these last few months. Can't tell you how much they've helped me with my own battle with anxiety and confidence. It has really opened up my eyes to how I am not alone in my struggles. Your interviews are amazing and so relatable to me. I am also learning so much. Thank you. Keep up the amazing work. Thank you, Rachel, for taking the time. This one is from uh, Positive Vibes. Um, It says, I'm hooked. Thank you. I've only listened to a couple of episodes and I'm hooked. Thank you for explaining it so I can understand. Can't wait to hear more. First time podcast listener. Woohoo! Got somebody to podcast. Um, changed, next one's titled Change My Perception About Anxiety from Sarah in Portugal. Makes me feel I'm not alone. Trying to focus more on the good that comes out of it now. Thank you. Uh, another one's great stuff from Hello Mr. Soul in the United States of America. I just discovered this today. So far, I've listened to about five episodes. Each has several useful ideas that are already helping. Thank you, Tim. These are awesome, aren't they? I'm getting to the funny one in a minute. This one's very therapeutic. Uh, another one from the US of A. This podcast has made a difference in my life. It gets me through tough days with anxiety. I always feel relieved, confident, and optimistic after listening to an episode. Thank you, Tim. This is the funny one. It just says, shh. 
like S S H H H. Shh. It's a one star review by Suspended Magic. That's the person's name in Australia. And uh, the review just says, Shh, no one cares about your diet. <laughs> I know I talk about food and my diet and stuff, but that's because I think it's relevant. I think it's uh, one of the things that has made me better. So I apologize if I bore you with my diet and I, that deserves a one star review, but um, I only say it because I think it's relevant. All right. Um, next one from Keith in Australia. See, this person in Australia likes me. Five star review. I have P- PTSD and anxiety for approximately 17 years. Wish I had found this coach years ago. Very cool. And the last one, uh, just a few to catch up on. This is from Banksy in the United Kingdom. Love these only on 005. So lots to catch up on. Yeah, mate, you have about 345 to go or something. So that's that. Um, also, uh, nice post in the uh, Less Anxiety More Life group today. Uh, somebody said, Tim Collins just found your podcast. My intense anxiety is much better. It's already better. Thank you so much. I never thought I'd beat this. Now I have hope. Yes, you do, my friend. Um, and one other thing uh, I read in the podcast, in the podcast, in the Facebook group today I wanted to read out because I think it's kind of cool, is this story, and it's in it's in the Facebook group. I'm not going to put the person's name to it, but I think it's uh, an interesting insight into how we deal with anxiety sometimes. So this is what they wrote. The other day I had a panic attack. Usually I go hide until I get better. Always happens at work and always due to someone yelling at me. But this time it was from uh, it was about a nasty email from a boss. I didn't want to be ashamed of it. I went into the kitchen area rather than my office. I didn't want to feel trapped and weak. I stood there focusing on my breathing, letting my tears drop without being sad. Still able to function with co-workers. My co-workers started to pass by and ask me what was going on. I said, it's anxiety. It's normal. It's going to get better soon. I got upset about something that I don't have any control over. Still able to function and talk normally. My colleague started to realize that he was too harsh on me lately. Uh, it took me five minutes and I was feeling better. It usually takes me an hour. I guess that just acknowledging my feelings um, helped. My boss apologized the next day. Um, as somebody that had a discussion with him, my boss told me he suffered from anxiety in the past and he understands. So I think the interesting part of that story, the the interesting insight was that instead of going to hide in a room, which it sounds like this person had historically done and which would probably be the natural reaction to that situation, she decided to just carry on and stand in the face of it and accept the feelings and say, right, these feelings you know, not particularly timely because I'm at work. Um, I know where they're coming from. I know the underlying history of them, but I'm not going to let them define me because, you know, uh, you got ro- you got to roll with it. So that's a classic example of leaning in and saying, you know, feeling anxious and I got I got to just get on with it. And eventually, as we all know, in our hearts, I know it's difficult when you're in the midst of go into war with anxiety sometimes, but we all know that uh, eventually it dissipates, right? So maybe motion, putting things in motion, makes it dissipate quicker, right? I think, I don't know what the old quote is, I think somebody said something like, anxiety is excitement without motion, right? So moving is going to help you get rid of that sooner rather than later. So, um, This episode actually won't be massively long, but uh, it's going to be good. So this all this stems from really is that with regard to I'm going to talk about my diet again. No, I'm not. With regard to um, my routine, I was finding I was kind of just getting up in the morning and sort of trying to eke out a bit more sleep if possible. And then um, I would go and go to work and get you know help get the kids ready a little bit go to work in the evening i'll come home it'll be like right all hands on deck what's going on with the kids what's for dinner eventually sometimes at like nine or ten o'clock i do my workout and uh sometimes i would just be like i'm so bloody tired i'm just gonna skip it at this point um we know there are you get a, a limited amount of willpower blocks are not actual ones, but theoretical ones in your mind, in your day. There's, your willpower dwindles as the day goes on, as you get fatigued or hungry um, or tired, or you've just used a lot of your willpower to abstain from the uh, vending machine at work or abstain from arguing with somebody or whatever it is. Eventually, you're just like, that's why people snap, right? They're just like, 
you know, screw this. I've been holding myself back all day. Now I'm going to explode. Um, so when it came to my situation, I was finding I was missing things a lot because I was just leaving them right till the end. So again, this is a small subtle change that I made a couple of weeks ago, but it's just been huge for me, which is that I've decided to switch it up and move my exercise to the morning. And I've never, I've tried this at different times in the past. It hasn't really worked for me because I haven't been committed to it. Uh, I haven't had accountability, uh, but this time through my workout group that I'm part of, again, part of the inspiration for doing the More Life Mastermind group. Um, but from that workout group, a lot of the, I put a quick question in the Facebook group and said, hey, who works out in the morning? Who works out at night? 90% of the people said they work out in the morning because, you know, for all the following reasons I'm going to talk about. And so I started doing it. And the first couple of days were hard. And I got to tell you, even like every day I wake up, I lay lay in bed for the first five minutes thinking, God, I, I just stay here. It's so warm and nice. And um, eventually get up and get going, right? Um, so for me, it's just committing to doing it for a period of time. I know I've talked about this before. I tried it before. Um, and I never really stuck to it. So this time I said, right, I'm doing it. I get up, I go downstairs. Luckily, I got the gym in my house in the in my downstairs area. I've kind of been building that out. I go downstairs and I just pick up uh, pick up the kettlebell and start swinging it. And that's my warm up. I just do like a hundred kettlebell swings in blocks of sort of twenty five, and I just start swinging it. And by the time I've done that, I'm kind of starting to be a bit more awake. And then I get into my first exercise, which might be squats or deadlifts or bench press, whatever it is. And I and by the time I finished, I feel like almost euphoric, like I've got it done. Um, I've already, you know, in the in the Mark Twain eat the frog paradigm, I've already done the hardest thing I'm going to do in my day, which is get my work out of the way. It feels good. I feel like I'm kind of cheating the system because a lot of people are still in bed or they're, you know, getting ready for work or whatever's going on. And I feel like, wow, I've I've actually done something that's really good for me. It's really good for my body. I don't have to think about it for the rest of the day. I'm not going to sit at work at lunch. I'm thinking, God, I wish I could just like hang out tonight and watch TV or play with my kids or do something. Oh, I've got to do that workout. Oh, my God. Now it's done. It's over. Everything's, you know, the only, one of the only considerations is one of the big sort of impacts for me is I have to eat sooner. Previously, I would sort of fast until lunchtime now i'm like i gotta eat like i'll have a protein shake after i work out and then i'll have something else mid-morning i've gotta get stuff in my system which is fine i can i can live with that it's all good but yeah just getting that you know eliminating the procrastination is done it's out of the way i feel you know feel like i've achieved so much and i've only just started and the reason i'm sharing this with you is because i want you to try it and it doesn't have to be exercise it could be your journaling or it could be your stretching or it could be a walk in the morning but whatever it is owning that first part of your day blocking that out prioritizing it and saying this is me time i'm going to get this done i believe i know that this is going to help you in your anxiety recovery journey because it makes you feel better, number one. And I know some people wake up with morning anxiety, for sure. It's going to help that as well. It makes you feel better, number one. But number two is I think it gives you more confidence. Like it makes you feel like because you've already achieved something for you, you're starting at an elevated position. You're starting at a plus point as opposed to if you roll out of bed and you're a little bit late and you grab a piece of toast and run out the door and you show up to work and you're a little bit, then you're at a minus. You're like tired, disorganized, you haven't got it together, you know, you're, the world's coming at you, you're not coming at the world. I want you to come at the world. And I want that to mean that by the time it gets to 930 at night, you're ready to go to bed, because you're tired. You haven't got time to binge watch Netflix. You got to go to bed because you're getting up at quarter to six or whatever time I get up at quarter to six. Whatever time you're getting up, you got to plan you get your seven or eight hours in and you got to go to bed. So what has it done to me on the evening side? Well, it's mean that meant that I've had less time to binge watch TV, which is fine. I can take that hit. I don't need that time. Um, it's, you know, it's it's fine that that has disappeared out of my life a little bit. But getting those mornings in, I tell you, I look forward to going to bed because I'm looking forward to waking up and getting after it. It just feels so nice to have that done and that ticked off. And yeah, I just can't talk enough about it. I feel like I've got a spring in my step every day that I do it. And I've been doing it Monday to Friday. I take the weekends off. But even this weekend coming up, I might sit there and just still get up at the same time and go and sit outside and do some journaling, right? And just sit there and, and still do something 
for myself, controlled by myself before I get into the day. It definitely feels like a relief. It feels like the anxiety from thinking about it all day is gone. Um, and just planning that first part of the day that you're in control of. Because as soon as you get to work or get to school or get to wherever you're going or turn on the news or go outside, then things start happening that aren't always in your control, right? Things are coming at you. But for that first bit that you can control, and obviously not everybody um, is going to work out at home, but if you're going to go to the gym, you know, go to the gym and get that done on your way. But yeah, if you can control that first piece, I think it's significant. And I, I, I was debating on whether to make an episode about this, and I was thinking, that's not really a whole episode, Tim, but it is. It's significant enough that if you do something for yourself in the morning before you do anything else in your day, I guarantee you are going to feel better. You just can't not feel better. It's, it's, it's you know, everything gets better because you're you're taking control, you're seizing the moment, you're leaning in, you're coming towards any of the the struggles you have and saying, I'm choosing better, I'm choosing me first. And uh, again, for me at the moment, that's weightlifting. Um, But it could just as easily be sitting down and journaling or doing your meditation or going for a walk or anything that is nurturing. It could be reading a book that you want to learn more about, any of those things, right? Exercise is good uh, because it's just good for you and it makes you feel good and it wakes all your body up and stuff. Um, Saunas I've been having in the evening because saunas frankly put me to sleep, but Anyway, my my son has been doing it with me this past week, um, and uh, he's also kind of coming around a bit where the first few days were really hard for him to get out of bed, and then this morning I went down there and said, dude, let's go, we're working out, and he's like, I'm not working out, I'm too tired, I went to bed too late, I was like, fine, I came back five minutes later, I said, oi, get out of bed, we're working out, he said, no, no, I'm not coming, so I was like, all right, give you a couple chances, I closed the door into the little gym area, and five minutes later, he walks in looking all tired, and I was like, wow, fair play that you actually like got yourself out of bed and showed up to do it. And this week, um, what we've been doing is, he's I've been doing my normal workout, and I kind of give him some body weight stuff to do alongside me, and just some sort of um, some watered down versions of what I'm up to. And then afterwards, we go outside, and we got one of these little above ground swimming pools with the, you know, the vinyl swimming pool with the, the steel poles around the outside which unfortunately we put up and down three or four times because it wasn't flat. Oh, my God. And then eventually our neighbor, who's a rock star home builder, came over and helped us put little wood blocks down and level the pool out. That was a ridiculous saga. Anyway, nice idea. But we've been going out after the gym every day and going out into the back garden and uh, jumping in this pool, which is still very cold because it's just the start of summer, doing a little dunk. So by the time I'm getting ready to leave for work, me and my boy have like worked out for an hour, we've dunked ourselves in cold water, then had a warm shower, grabbed a bit of food and we're off into the day. And that is, you know, if I had, I mean, I don't know why or not, but in the winter, I don't think I could dunk myself in the cold pool, but still, because it won't be set up, but you could still do your workout and have a cold shower or start with a warm shower and finish on cold. And just that lymphatic flush like all of those things are going to feel absolutely amazing and you're going to be firing so please try it give it a go do something for yourself first thing in the morning um if you haven't let yet left a review for the anxiety podcast like those fabulous ones i read out earlier then please be in my digest for next time leave me a review i will be eternally grateful uh if you have any questions or things that you want me to tackle on the show you can absolutely do that go to the contact page on the website if you want to become a patron which means you put a little bit of money each week or each month rather not weekly um towards the running of the show it means you're a supporter it means you can ask me questions that i will then turn into episodes all those good things uh i'll send you an anxiety journal stuff like that go to uh the website again it's all on the website um and click on membership and it's uh takes you to the patreon page where you can become an ongoing sponsor um like i said earlier don't forget the mastermind thing starts on june 30th i'm putting loads of effort into it you are going to love it you should be involved Um, I have an early bird deal on still at the moment. The code is INSIDER, which is I-N-S-I-D-E-R. Check out the um, mastermind. Put that code in and it gives you $50 off. And remember, until next time, less anxiety, more life. Thank you for listening to the Anxiety Podcast. For more information, go to theanxietypodcast.com.